and we all wrestle with things in corporate America. We all wrestle with things in, in our in our personal life. But now in, in an era where, you know, people are so sensitive um, and they can, where people are so easily to be offended, right? Um, and there are times people are easy to offend um, as well. One thing I love about you is that you just never have been afraid to bring in religion in your spiritual journey into every area of your life, right? What do you say to people who wrestle with that, right? Wrestle with bringing their religion or spirituality into the forefront of maybe their workplace or where they socialize at. It's such a strong constitution of yours. Well, you know, <clears throat> I don't think, I, I mean, all of my friends at Harvard Business School, OPM and all that, I never mentioned God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's not, it's not, it's not, not going to be accepted. You know, what is that in the good book? Don't throw pearls to pigs, not yeah. that they are pigs. Yeah. In other yeah. words, you, I adjust myself to what the situation is and accept it. If I'm with people with, you know, it, it's, it's, it's so wrong to say, you know, accept prayer for meals. We are going to eat that, I say, let's pray. <laughs> but otherwise, nobody ever hears me, hears me saying, God loves me. No, it's not proper. You know, it's not right. So by your own action, by my own action, then I am going to, you know, I preach without talking. Oh, that's good. Everyone here just shook their heads right now with that one, Lloyd. And the aud audience as you're listening right now, when you're watching on YouTube, um, go back. Everyone literally just nodded their head in that one. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah, you don't have to say anything. I mean, yes, yes. You keep God in your heart and he shines. What's up, brother? It's your boy, Mike Muse. Welcome to a very special edition of the Mike Muse Show. I know I don't use that word, edition, uh, too often, but this is a special interview for me. I get the chance to interview uh, a family member, um, someone who I love dearly, um, someone who I have just, I'm so appreciative of our relationship, you know, with my family and my mom being in Michigan. I don't have any family here. Um, and it's by chance, and, well, I guess like by chance, I had a chance to meet this incredible dynamic human being who has become literally a family member of mine here in New York City. Uh, we have had so much fun times and we're going to have more fun times ahead after she gets done with this book tour because she's a busy lady. We usually do our opera, but we haven't done an opera or Broadway play because she's so busy being this incredible author of this book. Um, why should guys have all the fun? An Asian American story of love, marriage, motherhood, and running a billion dollar empire. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible, the talented, the most kindest human being in the world, Mrs. Lloyda Lewis. How are you, Lloyda? Mike Muse, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I am honored that you are here on the Mike Muse Show. We have had many of nights where we have talked for hours, uh, long breakfasts, lunches, dinners, post receptions, and now you are here on the show. Uh, you have been a wealth of knowledge. I remember one conversation reception that we hosted at your apartment here at home in New York City. And it was a group of incredible dynamic women um, who are still in touch to this day as a result of that. And you said something that stuck out, stood out to me. Um, and it was for the women in the room, but it really had an impact on me. And you said, you all, you can have everything, but just not all at once. You can have it all. You can, ha you can have it all but not all at the same time. Talk to us about what does that mean yes. for you? Yes, it means that as a woman, we have several roles to play. And I will speak about myself. I, you know, I did not expect to get married, but when I met Reginald Francis Lewis, you know, I surrender. He was better than me in all aspects. And so in a way, I hitched my wagon to a star. So first of all, I'm a wife. As his wife, I will support him in his aspiration to go to the very top of corporate America. And so I gave him the language of words, the always positive. Yes, that was the right thing to do because he has said something maybe not good. All right. And uh, gesture, touch, okay, hug him. And in, in, case, in case he comes late, I don't read him with, why are you late? You know, you greet him with, darling, have you eaten? 
Okay, so all the support. And therefore, that's as husband. We had two girls. And so instead of, go I'm a lawyer, instead of going to a high-priced law firm, I went to Immigration and Naturalization Service, nine to five. Mm -hmm. So I can take care of the girls because he's taking care of big business, yeah. right? And then I was also working as an attorney. As I yeah. said, I'm not going to go for partnership, you know, nine to five. Then I went into real estate. We bought, my partners and I bought a 36 apartment building in a two building. And with all of that together, I got TB, tuberculosis. Yeah. Oh my God. Why? Because I was trying to do it all at once. It was, ladies and gentlemen, for those who may not be familiar with who the gentleman we're talking about, Reginald F. Lewis. Uh, Reginald F. Lewis was the first black man to own and operate a billion dollar business, TLC Beatrice. And a lot of you are familiar, including myself, uh, with this incredible book, uh, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? How Reginald Lewis Created a Billion Dollar Business Empire. Um, and his legacy was large. And Lloyd, that's why I'm really excited that you are now stepping out. Um, you had to step out to become the CEO of the company uh, once Mr. Lewis passed away too soon at, at the early age of 50. So you had to step into the role of managing this $50 uh, billion, excuse me, this billion dollar company. Um, and you were such a great custodian of it. Um, and as a result, you have been such a great custodian of his legacy. You've been such a great custodian of philanthropy here in New York City and in the world and things you do in the Philippines. Um, but what made you want to step out now and, like, and, and write this book about yourself and introduce you uh, to the world in this new way, in this new dynamic? Well, when the book was published in 1995 with Blair Walker as his co-writer because he died without finishing it. Mm -hmm. And so Blair Walker stepped in, has been following his career. And I was chapter six in his book, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? And for the past 30 years, I've been promoting it. Now that I'm close to the big 8 -0. Oh, I turned gosh. 80 last month. Ah, and so I said, You don't time, look 80 I, at all. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So 80 I is a new 60? 80 is a new 60, <laughs> correct, yes. So I called Blair Walker. Blair, you know half of my story, so help me with the other half. So he is my co-writer on the book. And I insisted this should be the title. Why should guys have all the fun? Yeah. An Asian American story of love, because I did fall in love. Mm -hmm. Marriage, we did get married six months after. We met on the blind date. Yeah. Children, we have two children, yeah. Leslie and Christina, and running a billion dollar empire. Yeah. I have to explain. When he died, it wasn't, okay, I'll succeed him. I couldn't talk. I couldn't think. I was totally discombobulated. I could not focus. Mm -hmm. And I could not even say the Our Father, thy will be done. It was so, so sudden. It was like a shock on my face, taking yeah. out my heart and, yeah. and, and you know, break, breaking it into a thousand pieces. But after six months and after my brother-in-law, Gene Fugit and I were looking for CEO, we interviewed five people. None of them are African-Americans, and it is known to be an African-American, but I didn't take their being Caucasians against them. All of them were asking a lot of money. I didn't also take that against them because it's natural. They're going to be CEO of a billion dollar company, yeah. but none of them would assure me that they're going to make it successful. And so if it fails, what will I say? Why did you pointing my finger at them? Mm. So instead of pointing my, their finger at them, I pointed to, to myself. Yeah. Take responsibility of the family fortune, mm -hmm. Loida. Take it over. So one year later, I became CEO. That's amazing. But Loida, before we talk about that journey of you becoming CEO, why, why, or, or was that why it was important for you to tell the story? So why now? Why the story now? Yes. Right? Why are you stepping out um, from celebrating and supporting a legacy, which you have done, to now establishing yourself uh, in the conversation? You know, because March 2023, or March is the Women's History Month. And coupled with that was my getting younger. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it's very important for women especially to understand that they should not be afraid of challenges because even they think, oh, I can't do it. When you say you can't do it, you already failed. So yeah. you've got to think positive and say, here's a challenge. I'll take it on, yeah. take it on. And what did you fail? So what? You learn from the failure. Tomorrow is another day. You start again. But Lloyd, I love to a couple of things I play here. Like, you know, Lloyd Lewis, you love 
and you lean into your identity, to your culture of being Filipino, right? And you do great work in the Filipino community here in the United States and abroad. Uh, you have a school in the Philippines. And what I love is that with all that is happening right now in the AAPI community, right? And the advancement that is being made in, you think, film. Right. You think of what happened with everything ever all at once. Right. You think crazy rich Asians. Right. Like how important was identity for you to lean into that? Like as an Asian American, as a Filipino, as a woman. Well, actually, I have to quarrel on the title, An Asian American Story of Love, because they said you're limiting yourself, Loida. I said, no, now with Asian hate, now with the uh, uh, with Michelle Yeoh yeah. becoming the first Asian woman feature in the, in the movie, yes, and with so many other things, it is so important that Americans understand we Asian Americans are just like them. We have our highs and lows, tragedies and triumphs. And so there should not be any Asian hate at all. You know, I don't understand why in the United States, as great as it is, to judge people by the color of their skin or by their physical mm -hmm. appearance or by economic status. You know, because I do believe we are all equal in the eyes of God. We are brothers and sisters. Yeah. And that I, but I do understand that the history of America on slavery is the original sin of America. Mm -hmm. And even if we are in 2023, there is still racism and bigotry and discrimination and yeah. violence mm -hmm. against people of color, against black men especially. Yeah. And so this is meant for all of us Americans. What, what was it like you as a woman and, and as an Asian American woman um, stepping in to fill the shoes of a company um, that was worth a billion dollars? And this was back in the 80s. You know, what did you feel the, the in, did you feel invisible? Um, how we hear a lot of conversation about women feeling invisible in the boardroom? Well, they may be invi I may be invisible to them, but I'm very visible to me. I know I who I that. am. I I know who I am. So I don't care what that. other people say. And mm -hmm. secondly, being a woman is not a negative. You know, I am intelligent. I was class valedictorian in high school, cum laude in college, mm -hmm. number six in my graduating class in the College of Law. So I know who I am. And I am loved by a man, mm -hmm. Reginald Lewis. I have two children. So for those people who are saying, oh, I'm less, I'm less. don't think of yourself as less. You are somebody. And if you don't know if you're somebody, write down all the good qualities that you have. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are not perfect, but you know, God is forgiving. You are forgiving. You have to forgive yourself. Yeah. So did I mind? Well, first of all, Mr. Lewis was intelligent enough to get 51% of the company. Yeah. So any board of directors who didn't want to vote for me is out. Good. I'll vote him out. <laughs> so, and, and I do have, you know, I know that I have, I'm not, um, not yet prime time. Yeah. So Butch Maley, my PR mm -hmm. said, okay, I'll give you a speech doctor. I mean, a speech expert. So he took out, you know, with a Filipino accent, my that was that. Mm -hmm. What the was the. You know, yeah. <laughs> fix that. And then with the videotape, he, le he let me see, she let me see how I look on television. And so if you're going to assume a role, take the role. Study how to do it. Yeah. And so that's my advice to women. But now, so this is interesting. So you, know, you went through the media training then. Um, what do, you, what do you think about that now? Like, wh what do you think about having to change your accent, right? Do you think that there is a need now for that to happen? Or do you think that people can just show up as themselves, right? Like understanding the moment that we're in our society at that time, but to where we are right now with identity, leaning into who you are, what are your thoughts looking back on that? Well, now it's 2023. I do understand that people have different view of what is correct or what is right. But in the end, you've got to be authentic. I have to be authentic. I have to be who I am. But I do know that as CEO, I have to be, I have to, in order to sell, it's almost like selling a product, in all, order to sell that I'm a legitimate and serious CEO, I have to look the part. And so I have to always look right, okay? have makeup if it's necessary, yeah. all right? Um, uh, be, be healthy, be strong, and be positive because yeah. that's what I want, uh, that's what who I am. 
and and by being who you are you're able to exec, uh you're able to influence other people in terms of your your persona you know your nature so for all those who are listening i think you have to, got to look into yourself who are you and then be the best version of yourself and then just work towards it nobody's perfect nobody's perfect nobody's perfect but you're moving towards perfection towards the best version of yourself because that's what we're meant to be we are god's made to god's image and likeness but i love what you're pulling out now right and i love for something like the authenticity and and to know you is to love you right and it's because you've always leaned into your identity you're not shy to lean into your religion, right? Like, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm out with Lloyda, like, we always pray over the meal beforehand, right? You, you never question any part about you. And what do you, is that a lesson that you want to impart on young women today, right? About not being afraid. Um, because sometimes I feel like society wants individuals to ask for permission, um, to do something, but I've never seen you as someone who was asking for permission. So, how do you think about that? Well, every day I try to take time off, reflection for 15 minutes. And in that quiet time, you know, in a way you touch God, God touches you. And so there's promptings or, you know, something happens within you when you're quiet. And the good book says, be still and know that I am God. So that's mm -hmm. the first thing. Set your intention for the day. And secondly, especially for women, you know, if you're in an abusive relationship, get out. Mm -hmm. Because why are you stupid? I mean, you know, you're being hurt physically. The man says he loves you. How can he love you when you're, you know? So in other words, just have respect for yourself of who you are. You're the daughter of God. You are the mother of children. Or if not, if you're a sing uh, staying a single, mm -hmm. all right? Then be glory, be glorious in your single blessedness. Mm. Yeah, love yourself because it's only by loving yourself can you love others. Mm -hmm. And you know, loving others is the other side of the coin of loving God. So you say, well, I'm falling in love with a man, but he doesn't believe in God. But is he kind? Is he fair? Is he, is he, uh, does he love you? Then that's the other side of love of God as op opposite to someone who says, oh, I got to mass, I got to the temple, I got to the synagogue. And then it's ugly to the janitor. Okay, yeah. or it's ugly to you, you know, but I do understand, especially men or black men, the blip, blip, blip comes naturally. So mm -hmm. let it go one ear out the other because that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Really talking about agape love, right? Agape, really, love. agape love. Love is kind. Mm -hmm. Love is patient. Love is not proud. Love is not self-seeking. And love does not keep a record of wrong. It does not. You know? And that's grace. Yes. Yeah, yes, agape love it and is. grace, right? Yes, yes. And, and looking for a mate, right? Like you're saying, if, if someone could demonstrate love through God's love and action towards you, that is God. Right. Yes. Yes. Even if it's yes. not said it and claimed yes. as God, it yes. is God. Yes. So so far, what we've unpacked right now, Lloyd, uh, is lessons uh, to women, in particular Asian women or AAAPI no. community. No, no, no. But, it's it's, oh, it's yeah. really for all women. Yeah, but I was getting there. All women. Yeah, yeah. I was I, I, I was getting there. But it's for all women. But it's through the lens of someone who is Filipino, through the lens of AAPI. But that goes back to what you're saying: being authentic and leaning to your identity. That's fine with that, right? And like leaning in with like love. Right. And I love how you said being intentional. Right. So, so far, the takeaways are intentionality. Right. The intention, intentionality, also authenticity. Right. Which I really, really love. But another thing I want to talk about, because I get from you in spirit wise, is tenacity. Right. And advocacy. Um, there's something about the way that you have been such a custodian of legacy. Right. And, and of culture. I'm just wondering, is that from your days as an immigrant lawyer? Right, uh, this activism, this advocacy uh, that comes out, this tenaciousness uh, that comes out. I think it's my growing up. My father had two, had my parents had two brothers before me, and he was so hard on them. I was going to be the first girl, and so in his, you know, the, we were raised. My sister, younger sister, and I, Melly and I, were raised from my father and mother's attitude. You can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. So he gave me permission to be who I am and who was what I self. I'm who and who I am. And as in front of us is the Catholic Church, and my father was best friend with the pastor. So from the start, it was like Christianity 
or God, Jesus Christ, was very present in our life. And so from that, okay, comes my sense of what is right and what is wrong. So when I was 12 and they were going to have a topless bar in our town, all right, what would it mean? It might mean so many other consequences. Yeah. So I raised, I, I got my friends together and we rallied in front of this municipal council to ban this topless bar. So, you know, at 12, I was going already to do that. So in my sense, there's always uh, an ad advocacy for what is right, what is good for humanity, or what is good for my town, yeah. what is good for the country. Well, as I'm looking, as I'm listening to you, I feel like I'm getting to know you all over, right? And and something I'm curious about, and we all wrestle with things in corporate America. We all wrestle with things in, in our in our personal life, but now in in an era where you know people are so sensitive, um, and they can, people are so easily to be offended, right? Um, and there are times people are easy to offend um, as well. One thing I love about you is that you just never have been afraid to bring in religion in your spiritual journey into every area of your life, right? What do you say to people who wrestle with that, right? Wrestle with bringing their religion or spirituality into the forefront of maybe their workplace or where they socialize at. It's such a strong constitution of yours. Well, you know, <clears throat> I don't think, I, I mean, all of my friends at Harvard Business School, OPM and all that, I never mentioned God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's not, it's, not, it's not, not going to be accepted. You know, what is that in the good book? Don't throw pearls to pigs, not yeah. that they are pigs. Yeah. In other yeah. words, you, I adjust myself to what the situation is and accept it. If I'm with people with, you know, it, it, it's, it's so wrong to say, you know, accept prayer for meals. We are going to eat that, I say, let's pray. <laughs> but otherwise, nobody ever hears me, hears me saying, God loves me. No, it's not proper. You know, it's not right. So by your own action, by my own action, then I am going to, you know, I preach without talking. Oh, that's good. Everyone here just shook their heads right now with that one, Lloyda. And the audi audience as you're listening right now, when you're watching on YouTube, um, go back. Everyone literally just nodded their head in that one. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah, you don't have to say anything. I mean, yes, yes. You keep God in your heart and he shines. Oh, my gosh. I think that is being you know, a great disciple of whatever you practice, right? Whatever you subscribe to is if it's in you. Right. Let it show through action. Right. And not necessarily words, because oftentimes in the words is sometimes what could be off putting um, because the words necessarily don't always match your action. Right. Yes. And you have done a good job with that. Uh, but I'm not perfect. Of course not. No I hate is. inefficiency and stupidity and incompetence. Yeah. So sometimes I'm dealing with that on the radio or not on the radio, on the telephone. I'm asking a clerk and I do get angry, of course. you know, so my my um, giving up for Lent is giving up anger. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know when if I can I join feel, you on that journey, Lloyda. I am feeling angry. <laughs> I just stop and pause. Loida, you're getting angry. Yeah. Okay, so I calm down. Yeah, so we're all in a state of becoming. Yeah. We're all in a state. We're all in a journey. But, you know, what is that now? Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. So you, 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 you'll, you'll see it. Well, Louis, I am so glad that you wrote this book, uh, Why Should Guys Have All the Fun? An Asian American Story of Love, Marriage, Motherhood, and Running a Billion Dollar Empire. As we close, Loida, I'm just wondering, you know, you've been, I wouldn't say in the background, but you've been amplifying other legacies. Like, how does it feel to step into it and, and to amplify your own? <laughs> I don't know. Because in the past, you know, ever since I, Mr. Lewis died, it's not like I have been amplifying myself. 
then, I mean, in a way, I'm applying myself. I was promoting Mr. Lewis legacy mm -hmm. because as the first African-American to own a billion dollar business empire in 1987, for me, he's like President Barack Obama, yeah. the first president who's African-American. Because since Mr. Lewis in 1987, nobody has bought <clears throat> a billion dollar business. So I'm still waiting for a person of color to buy on a leverage buyout a billion dollar. So for me, that should be known because he came from humble beginnings and he was able to rise to the very top of, of, of corporate America. And indeed, with Blair Walker finishing his book, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? I have met even recently a uh, black men, 500 black men brunch. Mm -hmm. There were around a thousand men there. And a lot of people came to me. I read his book. I changed my life. I read his book. I am now like this. So, so that was me promoting him. So this one is not really I'm now promoting myself because all throughout I was talking about him. And in a way, in a way that's promoting myself. Someone that. who loves someone. I love that. That never fails. But I love though, Lloyda, is that you're able to promote your principles of who you are. Right. And I think that's so important. And I think the principles of who you are can be lessons for so many. You know, even as I said, audience, it was a reception for women. And I happened to be a fly on the wall and I was listening in and the words of wisdom that I got um, have stuck with me, you know, ever since. Uh, your pearls and jewels are incredible. And I'm so glad uh, that you are telling these stories about your principles. We all could use them. Mrs. Lloyd Lewis, we love you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, for those of you who have not gotten the book, make sure you get it. And also, too, this is the book that she's referencing, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? Uh, buy both books. You will not be disappointed. Lloyd Lewis, any closing words that you want to leave us with? <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, guys, Mike Muse. And you know why? Uh -huh. I love you because you're a Kappa man. Oh, all right. <laughs> yo, yo to the noobs. <laughs> we love you back, yes, Lloyd yes, Lewis. Yes. Uh, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.